Well, today we've come down to have a bit of a test flight uh, and some initial testing for the DJI S1000 spreading wings. Uh, this is the premium edition. Uh, there are a few different varieties, but uh, realistically, if you're going to carry a $5,000 camera behind it, you really don't want plastic bits and pieces lying around. So we've basically we'll run through a quick setup. Uh, we'll have a little look at the features of it, plug it in, give it a test flight, and see how we go. So we did all the wiring, packaging, and everything at home's all been set up and tested. Each of the arms has a little snap lock. So what we've got in here is we have a 16,000 milliamp battery. Okay, that runs 22 volts. Uh, your PMU, IOSD, and your A2 controller over here for your flight controller. This is your GPS mount. And what I've popped on here is a tiny little remote camera and stuff for FPV. This should give us, this should give us the ability to be able to just see a first person view via a monitor. Um, until we have a camera installed in it, we're doing some test flights and things. It's a lot cheaper to crash without the camera attached. Use something like this just to see where you're going for now. As you can see by my size, this is not a small copter. Okay, so you've got a fairly decent radius here and they have fairly big hands. Each one of those props is a good six inches long. So you can imagine the sort of lift it has. Uh, running uh, 4114 motors uh, on every end. You'll see the reds are all marked at the front here for orientation and underneath here there's a couple of little LED lights, reds and greens for the side so you know which direction you're following. Next what we're going to do of course, safety precautions is we always turn the controller on first. This has all been pre-configured at home. This is a, TF, uh, a T8FG uh, from Fataba. Um, it's only a really basic, it will only give you enough switches and controls to be able to do the basics of what you need. Uh, return to home, IOC, uh, throttles, gear and things along those lines, GPS. Um, if you need more channels uh, for more functionality then uh, better off to go to the 14. Uh, that will give you some more channels available for you to program for other functions. Um, so at the moment what we're doing is we're going to fire up our little FPV transmitter if we can. Next you want to connect your earth first, of course. And your power. It will. It will in itself run through a basic check and test on just about everything it can. Uh, over on this side here we have a little LED light. And this little LED flashes to give you an idea of what's going on uh, inside the computers. So purple flashes mean that it is getting GPS signal. Red flashes means it doesn't have enough GPS yet to take off or there are other problems. Usually it's things like calibrating the IMU and all the rest of it. Now, we haven't done a calibration on this outside before in live. So we're gonna do one right now just to make sure it's all tested outside uh, in the real world before we actually take off and do anything else. So, in order to do that, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is we need to Flick the GPS switch about 10 times up and down, and we'll see the little LED light will go blue, asking us we need to do our first calibration, which is pick it up and rotate it around its centre, 360 degrees, which means not your centre, its centre. Then it says, please turn me over and do the same again, head down, again, use the antenna as a central pivot point in order to get the balance right, otherwise what will happen is you're going to try and walk around around in circles and you're not going to have a lot of luck. So, we believe that calibration was successful. Now, at the moment, We don't have any flashes on our GPS. Now, that's normally a little bit of a worry, but because we did a calibration, it's more than likely reset everything and is asking us to start again from scratch. Unplug the wires. This will now reset the home point facing this way again. Every time I plug it in, it'll reset its initial direction. So 
again. Plug this in. This time we're at a point where we should be watching now for the GPS light allowing the IMU and everything to warm up, allowing it to get enough GPS lock before anything happens. While this is warming up and checking everything, the first thing we'll note with the remote control is everything must be in a neutral position or off position before anything will start. Okay, so my GPS was in the wrong position. This LED light wouldn't flash because it won't allow me to initiate anything while everything's not switched off. So my IOC has to be switched off, my landing gear has to be down, my GPS lock has to be on and everything else has to be in place before I can start. Now, what you'll notice now is I'm getting two lovely, consistent purple flashing lights, which is to hold both down below. Now, this is a test flight, so we've made sure we've faced it away from ourselves. We're looking at the vibration of the motors, looking at any imbalance. If you can see very carefully, you can see considerable imbalances in the motors, little gentle vibrations. Now, I don't know if that's going to come through so easily on the video, but we're going to give it a test run anyway to see how she's going. Now, there's not a great deal of weight on her. We're still noticing two purple flashing lights. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and just jump it up a little bit, about 10 or 15 feet in the air to get it off the ground. functioning correctly no flashing if I turn her a little bit you'll see the GPS light on her still getting a couple of good purple flashes nothing major she's now giving you single purple flashes because she's far enough away the landing gear's been tested she goes up no overkill she doesn't overpass her servo range go down again too not bad so it's no longer now using GPS to hold itself and what you'll notice is the light on the back changes to a flashing yellow to let me know that I'm not in GPS mode. Now again, you can still control it really easily. It's not difficult. You just need to take your time. All the lessons you went through, all the things you learned are all the same, they haven't changed. Okay, so we can see in attitude mode, all it's gonna do is that she'll drift and move herself a little bit with the wind, even if we don't want her to, so. All right, now that lead, I'm gonna flick back to GPS. It'll go back to purple now, telling me that everything's cool. Look at our landing gear down, so again, we're just going to start slowly, slowly coming in for a nice, comfortable landing. You can hear a lovely, clean hum on the engines and more of a high-pitched ting from the metal rather than anything about the blades chopping through the air, which means it's very efficient. Again, we're going to jump up a little bit, if we can, about 10, 15 feet. And then we just throttle back a little bit, allowing us now to sort of see what we're doing. We're high enough now probably to be able to raise the gear. So, again, she's sitting nicely, gear up. As you can see, she's functioning nicely, moving around nice and smooth. I set my controls at about 80% on purpose, so you can start to see some gentle, gentle movements without things getting too far out of control. It's flying steady, seems to be reasonably well. Let's turn her around. Yes, kick in. 